Oh, g'day guys, we've got a question on average rates of change today. We've got a function 3x minus 6 over x minus 2 and we're asked to find the average rate of change over the interval 6 to 8. Now the average rate of change, as you can see by this diagram here, is the line that connects the two endpoints of an interval and we work out what the gradient of that line is. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a few ideas from our linear algebra sort of classes that you would have taken before this and basically what you're going to do is you're going to work out what the rise over the run is. So the, the y value of the end point and the y value of the beginning point over the x value of the end point minus the x value of the beginning point. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply that to this function by finding the function at 8, the function at 6 and then subtracting 8 minus 6. So let's start with the function at 8. Now this is going to be equal to 3 times 8 minus 6 divided by 8 take 2. 3 8 to 24 take 6 is 18 on 6. So this is equal to 3. Then we're going to find the function at 6 and we get 3 times 6 minus 6 on 6 take 2. And for this one guys, 3 6s are 18, take 6 is 12. On 6 take 2 is 4, which is equal to 3. So then what we're going to do guys, is we've found the y values at the endpoints of this domain, 6 to 8. And now what we're going to do is we're going to insert them into our sort of gradient calculator. So we've got the function at 8, so our rate of change, or m, is equal to the function at 8, which is 3, subtract the function at 6, which is also 3, over 8 take 6. So this, guys, is going to equal 0, 2, which is effectively 0. So you can see, guys, that the average rate of change of this function is 0 over the period 6 to 8. Now, how could this be so? Well, let's just pretend, guys, that we've got a graph. Let's, here we go. And we've just got some random function on this domain. Now, what we've been asked to do is we've been asked to find a average rate of change, say, from here to here. Now, yes, the function has gone up and it's come back down, but the as the crow flies linear direction from these two points is zero. So you can see that that is how you could have a function which we know isn't a flat line, such as this one, to have an average rate of change of zero. I'm sure if you found the instantaneous rate of changes over this d domain, you wouldn't have many points where it equals zero. So I hope this video helped, guys. If it did, just give it a quick thumbs up. If you want to, you can subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. But just remember, guys, you must keep practicing, practicing, and practicing your maths. It is one of those practice makes perfect sort of subjects. But you have to make sure whilst you're practicing, guys, that you most of all keep enjoying yourself. So I'll see you next time.